Welcome to Jammin' with Jason Mefford, a show where we discuss topics relevant to chief audit executives and professionals in audit, risk, and compliance. We discuss the technical and soft skills needed to navigate the minefields of organizations. You hear best practices and practical advice for helping you advance your career, and we'll even talk about music, mindfulness, and psychology, because we can. So sit back and relax while you listen to the number one podcast in the world for internal auditors, unscripted and unedited. Welcome to another episode of Jammin' with Jason. Hey, I am excited to be with you again this week. And uh, today I wanted to talk about a little bit of a different topic uh, than some that we have done before. And uh, so let me give you a little context. Um, Early in my career, um, I had an experience when I was working in public accounting uh, that has still stuck with me to this day. And so today I'm going to go through, I'm going to share with you a couple of stories, and then we're going to talk about uh, actually investing in yourself. And so let me, let me kind of start off with this story um, from when I was in public accounting. And I remember um, there was this local um, uh, board that I wanted to get on. And uh, in order to do that, you had to have a referral letter uh, from your employer. So I went to, to my partner and I said, hey, you know, I need to get this, uh, this letter from you uh, in order to put in and get on this board of directors. And so he said, okay, well, why don't you go, uh, go write it up and I'll sign it. And I kind of looked at him and, and was like, well, the, the, it's supposed to come from you. And he stopped me and he said, Jason, if you can't toot your own horn, nobody else will. And so that has always stuck with me in the idea that, you know, we are the ones that are primarily responsible uh, for our career, for what we do. And so, yes, we have the help of other people, um, but if we are not willing to do things on our own for ourselves, nobody else will help us. And so that's why, you know, we're talking about invest in yourself or nobody will. And, uh, and, and it kind of, like I said, it, it stuck with me and has carried on for decades now, uh, that particular uh, experience that I had. Now, in, in order to kind of talk about this, uh, you know, I just kind of wanted to, to, to explain something that I see a lot when I talk with people. And it doesn't matter whether it's a, you know, chief audit executive that I'm working with uh, or somebody that's going through like the, the uh, a CIA review course is that a lot of times people just get so dependent and reliant on other people doing things for them or other people investing in them uh, that when it comes to the point of being asked to invest in yourself, everybody kind of freaks out like, whoa, what do you mean? You expect me to pay for that by myself? And, um, you know, I get it because, you know, as you, as you think about um, kind of the career path that we go on, you know, we start off and we go to college and, uh, you know, maybe our parents are paying for it or maybe we pay for it, but we're investing in ourselves, kind of in that college experience. And then we graduate and we go to work for a company. And uh, if many of you were like me, you know, you go to work for a company and they start paying for your training. They, they start investing in you, having you go to certain trainings that they want to they pay for it, they pay for your certifications, and they do other stuff like that. And then all of a sudden we get to a point in our career where maybe that goes away. Uh, Or if we're not conscious in trying to invest in ourselves regularly, what we can end up finding is that years have gone past without us actually having invested in ourselves. And this reminds me of another story. Um, One of the companies that I worked with, uh, there was another executive in the company. And I remember a story because we were talking about training and going and getting training ourselves as executives or, you know, having our people go to training. And he said to me, he said, you know, I don't go to training 
because I think the company expects me to already have all of that expertise. And so, you know, they've already hired me with the knowledge that I need. So I shouldn't need to go to training. And I always found that rather ironic, uh, especially since this person was in charge of human resources. Uh, and the kind of the sad end to the story is, you know, that even though this person didn't feel like they needed to go to training and chose not to invest in themselves, a few years later, that person was let go. And so, you know, especially in today's day and age, we have to be constantly improving and learning and growing because the world is. And if we're not doing that, we're going to get left behind. Now, to talk about what it really takes uh, to become, uh, you know, this uh, an expert in your particular field uh, or to really be seen as kind of a trusted advisor. That's a word that we like to use a lot in internal audit. What does it actually take for people uh, to see us that way and to put in the time and effort, invest the time and money and effort necessary uh, so that we can gain kind of that notoriety, uh, that people see us as an authority and an expert. So I thought what would be helpful and kind of fun for me is if I bring in a couple of stories from uh, two individuals, and I like to refer to these two gentlemen as the gods of the strings, uh, because they are both musicians. One's a fiddler, uh, and the other one was nicknamed Buster. And so what I want to do is just go through and explain a little bit about uh, both of these gentlemen, their journey, and kind of what we can learn and see that if we're not the ones willing to invest in ourselves, uh, nobody else will. Uh, because both of these gentlemen actually invested significantly uh, in their craft to get to be seen as the best in the world at the instrument that they played. And so the first one that I want to talk about is the fiddler. And so when we talk about it, this, this man kind of comes from a very, uh, very, very interesting story. Uh, you know, he, he, he grew up and uh, very, very early on, even at the age of three, uh, was begging to be able to go to violin school. And uh, he was turned down because they said, you're too little to actually hold a violin. So they didn't accept him into the school. So undetermined, he <laughs> got a toy fiddle and taught himself at the age of three how to start playing the violin because nobody would take him into the school. So he started at that point investing his own time into being able to do this, right? Now, interestingly enough, along the way, as he's, as he's a, a, a still a child, he ends up getting polio. And uh, I know polio has really kind of gone away in the world for the most part now, um, but both my, um, I had two family members, actually my mother and one of my sisters who actually had polio uh, back in the 50s. And uh, uh, for, for my sister, actually, she's continued to actually have long-term effects of this where she has limited mobility in her left arm. Well, this, this young violinist actually got polio. And from that point on in his life has had to always use crutches uh, to be able to walk. Now, instead of giving up at that point and saying, oh, you know, now I can't do that because I have polio and I have to use crutches. He taught himself, he just sits down and he plays the violin. Now, um, to, to, to go along in this, right, this man that I'm talking about, his name is Itzhak Perlman. And he is seen as the greatest violinist in the world uh, at this point. Now, he has had to invest time and money in order to get his craft to where it is. This is a man who's played before the Queen of England, the President of the United States. He gets paid very well every time he goes and does a concert. Now, for those of you that have actually seen the movie Schindler's List, and you remember the theme music for that movie, that was actually Itzhak Perlman playing that music. 
And so you've heard him before if you've seen that movie. Uh, and the man is amazing. But let me tell you a little bit more about him to show again how he invested the time and money that it took to become the best in the world. So there was a story uh, that was given, and, and I believe it was in Austria. He had finished a concert uh, in Austria, and this man came up to him afterwards, and he said, oh, Mr. Perlman, you were play your playing was so beautiful. I would give my life to be able to play like you. And Mr. Perlman just looked at him and smiled and said, I have. Now, I don't think the man <laughs> fully understood, but literally he has given his life to his craft, okay? Every day when he is not giving a concert, he practices for nine hours a day, okay? Four and a half hours in the morning, four and a half hours in the evening. He is putting in the time every day to make him the best in the world. Now, what about money? Well, he has a couple of violins that are very expensive. In fact, the Stradivarius that he plays is valued at well over a million dollars. He had to buy that in order to help him become the best in the world. In fact, one of the violins that he played, a Stradivarius that he played before, uh, was sold in auction a few years ago for $16 million. Okay, so here's an example of, of a man who has gone through and, and has become the best in the world at what he's doing, investing his time and his money in order to be able to do that. So now let me switch gears and talk about the next man. And as I told you at the beginning, um, he was nicknamed Buster. So for his friends and family, they always knew him as Buster. And Buster was a cute little kid, but he came from a very impoverished background. Uh, both of his parents were abusive and alcoholics. Uh, he rarely had three meals a day. In fact, he had to often go to neighbors or friends' houses uh, to actually have a real meal. Uh, he, so he was, he was hungry a lot of the time and uh, just really had a poor uh, home life. Now, what ended up happening was Elvis Presley came to town, and, and, and Buster couldn't afford a ticket to go see the concert, so he climbed up on trees and stuff on the outside and was able to sit and listen to Elvis play. And that day, he decided that the guitar was for him. So everything else in his life started to get pushed away except for the guitar. He went down and he paid $5, which he probably didn't even have at that time, to be able to get a guitar and start learning how to play. And from that point on, almost every waking hour, he was taking his guitar with him and playing it wherever he could. So at that point, he started investing again hours and hours of time uh, to be able to play the guitar. Now, a lot of times, again, we think, well, you know, we, I don't have time for that. There's other stuff that's, that's, that's going on in my life. Um, how can I actually take the time to invest in myself? And the thing is, you have to actually make time for it. There's a lot of other things that can get in our way. But let's go back to the story of Buster. Um, you know, again, he started playing guitar. He got a band together. They started playing in some little places. And then he got himself in trouble and had to go before the judge. And uh, he had a couple of run-ins with the law. And the judge said, all right, mister, you either go into the army or you go to jail. And so he chose to go in the army. Uh, went into the army, had to kind of give up a little bit on his music, or so one would think. But again, every waking hour when he wasn't doing what he had to do in the army, he was in the rec center playing a guitar. And in fact, you know, somebody else actually overheard this, and they ended up striking up a, a conversation and a friendship that lasted for many years. So he ends up getting kicked out of the army because he wasn't a very good soldier and uh, ends up on the streets again with a guitar trying to make a living as a musician. Now, 
at that point, he's, he started going on a, a circuit and, and spent two to four years actually just trying to hone his craft as a guitarist. And he went all over the, the United States playing uh, and being hired as a backup and, and trying to do stuff on his own. And, um, you know, one of the people actually said that, especially this, this one particular point in his career, uh, that he would always be playing the guitar, even after the shows, you know, when most of the people would be going out partying and having fun uh, after the concert, he would go back to his hotel room and continue to play his guitar. And it was estimated that probably in about a four year period, he did 20 years worth of practicing because he just practiced that much more than anybody else. It was something that he was committed to. He was committed to being the best, and he put in the effort uh, to be able to do that. Now, another interesting thing, again, was the, was the journey easy for Buster? No. In fact, he got hired by several different bands and fired at least four or five times from big act uh, groups that he was actually a guitarist for. He'd be there for a little bit of time and they would fire him. He'd go and work for somebody else and they would fire him. But along that whole journey, he didn't get discouraged. He continued to play and to practice. And what ended up happening is eventually, at some point, somebody noticed him, got him in touch with the right person. And, uh, and, and here's another little story of Buster is this person that kind of discovered him said, hey, let's take you to over to England. And uh, because there's some great, great guitarists over there and I want, I want to introduce you to them and I want you to kind of get into uh, the scene in England uh, for a little while. And so they ended up taking him over there. Now, one of the things that he had done or had learned as he was growing up uh, in, in this, he, he actually worked on what was called the Chitlin Circuit, which was a, a blues uh, a group kind of in the, in the South where you would kind of go around uh, these different places in the southern part of the United States and play. And there was a thing called head cutting. And what that meant is some young guitarist would come up with, uh, you know, whoever the lead guitarist was, and they would start having uh, kind of a little, a little duel where he would try to outplay the older uh, guitarist who happened to be there. And sometimes it worked and they outshone and, and from that they were able to kind of get picked up and people saw uh, how, how they were and they ended up having a career from that point. Other times they weren't very good and they ended up getting, getting uh, knocked down. And so again, Buster finds himself in England. And so he's been used to this uh, head cutting kind of a mentality in the groups that he'd been hanging out with in the United States. And so he gets the opportunity to play with uh, one of the biggest bands in the world at that time in England. And he decided to go head cutting on the lead guitarist. And so he got up on the stage and he blew the other guitarist away. Now, I've been referring to this man as Buster because that was his nickname but many of you know him by another name. And in fact, that band that he played with was Cream, and the guitarist who he head cutted was the name of Eric Clapton, who at that time was seen as the best guitarist in the world. And so Little Buster uh, ended up going, and after again, years and years and years of investing in himself, in time and money, ended up outshining Eric Clapton. And that's how all of you know about Jimi Hendrix. Okay, Buster was Jimi Hendrix. And so the reason that I bring up the, these two stories is to show you um, if you're not willing to invest in yourself, nobody else will. If Itzhak Perlman had not invested in himself since the time he was three years old, and playing over nine hours a day to invest in himself, he would never have become or risen to the point of being the best violinist in the world. If Jimi Hendrix had not gone out and, and, and worked and invested in himself and bought guitars that he couldn't afford 
and end up, you know, going all over the country trying to play anywhere and any time that he could, there was no way that he could have become the greatest guitarist in the world. And a lot of people, even to this day, still feel that Jimi Hendrix is one of the greatest guitarists of all time. In fact, if not the most or the greatest guitarist of all time. So the reason I bring this up is, again, if you want to be the best, if you want to be seen as a trusted advisor, if you want to be seen as someone who has authority, you have to be willing to put in the time. Now, some of you might be saying, well, Jason, how do we do this? So how about if we end with me actually explaining uh, to you some of the ways that you could do this in your professional career? You've got to be able to put in the time and learn something every day. So what does that look like? Well, you should be reading. You should be reading books. You should be reading periodicals. You should be trying to teach and learn things all the time. You should have this, this concept of lifelong learning that I like to talk about to where you are always trying to learn and develop something new. Now, some of you might say, I can't do that. I'm too busy. I'm, my, I, I'm, I'm already so busy. And so let me tell you, all of these things that I'm talking to you about, you have to make time for. Now, I'm not talking about having you sit down for nine hours a day like Yitzhak Perlman does and reading just for nine hours a day. But what you should do is everybody can afford to take five or 10 or 15 or 30 minutes to do some of these things. So you should be taking time every day to try to read, to listen to books on audio tape. You know, if you, if you can't pick up a book or that doesn't work for you, then there's plenty of options now for you to be able to listen to books on tape. Uh, I say books on tape, that's how old I am. Uh, audio books on your phone, in your car, as you're commuting to and from work, uh, as you're doing your exercise for the day or other ways that you can actually start incorporating that in. There's podcasts that you can listen to. And again, these podcasts are, are teaching you, you're learning things from them, and it's helping you to grow and learn something every day. You know, YouTube is a fabulous resource as far as, you know, the amount of videos and other things that you can learn out there that, again, you can take time every day or every week uh, to be able to be learning from some of those uh, different avenues. So those are some things that you could do every day or every week uh, to try to help you learn and hone your skill uh, to become the best at what you're trying to do. Now, some other things that you can do. Um, you know, again, I said at the beginning, sometimes we end up to the point where we, we've gotten so used to our employers paying for everything that when budgets get cut or we have poor economic times, often the funding for those things gets cut. And so what ends up happening all too often is people say, well, if my employer's not going to pay for it, then I guess I can't do it, okay? Or I don't have the money to be able to do that on my own. But let me just kind of switch that around on you because here's the reality again, as I told you to begin with. In today's day and age, if you are not willing to invest in yourself, and sometimes that might mean that you have to pay uh, money out of your own pocket as well as invest your time, you're going to get left behind. So another thing that you should be doing is investing in training, okay? Um, and, and, and again, there, there are lots of options that are out there now uh, for you to be able to find training uh, and to be able to get the training and do the things that you need to do. You know, some free, some that's paid, uh, but you should be looking at what are the things that I want to learn and find a way, find a teacher, find somebody that can help you uh, to be able to learn that. Now, again, when we talked about, you know, Jimi Hendrix and Itzhak Perlman, do you think that they ever got trained on how to play those things? Yes, of course they did. They spent hours learning from other teachers and taking training as well. Some formal, some informal training, but the only way that you can get to the top of that game is if you're actually investing in training. So if your company won't pay for it, you need to find a way to pay for it because it's not about not being able to afford it. 
you have to find a way to afford it because you can't afford not to be trained. Remember the story I told you before about that executive in HR? It caught up with him and it eventually catches up with everyone else. If you quit investing in yourself, eventually you will make yourself irrelevant. Third one is to actually hire a coach. And again, some, to some of you may be thinking, wow, well, what do you mean? Well, as especially as you move further and further up in your career, there is usually less of an opportunity for you to have training or for people to actually uh, you know, go through some of the training. And so actually hiring or having someone as a coach or a mentor is an excellent way for you to be able to continue uh, to develop in what you are, are doing. And again, when we talked about Perlman and Hendricks, do you suppose they had coaches and mentors? Absolutely, both of them did, right? And in fact, it reminds me of a story because um, I remember seeing a video one time um, by Eric Schmidt. And Eric Schmidt was, at that time, he was the CEO of Google. And I remember him telling a story. He said, you know, when I first came in as CEO of Google, uh, one of the members of the board pulled him aside and said, okay, Eric, you know, congratulations on being here now. Uh, you know, who are you going to have as your coach? And he said, what do you mean? I'm the CEO of Google. I don't need a coach. And the board member said, oh, no, everyone needs a coach. And so we've got to do something to, to bring in or get you a coach. And, you know, I think, again, like I said, that, that man that I, I worked with before, sometimes we feel like we get to a point in our career and we should just know everything and we don't need help. But that is a big fallacy. That is not true. If you look, uh, again, if we, instead of music, let's look to athletics, okay? And think about some of the top athletes in the world, whether it's tennis player, golf player, football player, baseball, whatever sport. Do you think the top players in the world have a coach? Absolutely. Every one of them has a coach. In fact, many of them have multiple coaches. So there's never a point in our life, in our career, where we should stop learning. We have to continue to grow and continue to develop. Because here's the truth, again, like I said at the beginning, if you're not willing to invest in yourself, nobody else will. And if I'm an employer or I'm somebody, let's say, who might be trying to pay for your, uh, for your training, if you are not willing to invest in yourself, then why should I invest in you? And so what ends up happening is the more you choose to invest in yourself, the more others will also invest in you. So that's today's episode. Uh, a couple of things just to wrap up here. Um, you know, again, as I, as I talked about at the beginning is making sure that you're doing something every day uh, and, and every week, every year. So again, kind of as a recap, you know, a couple of things you can do, make sure you're trying to learn something every day by reading, by listening to audiobooks or podcasts or watching YouTube videos or other videos on the internet. Uh, make sure that you're investing in training. Set aside, take, make time to be able to invest in your own training um, and hire a coach or consider having mentors or other people along the way uh, that are willing to help you as well. So I hope this is helpful. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I wanted to be able to throw out there too, because today's episode is actually uh, being sponsored by C-Risk Academy. And uh, one of the things that they have offered uh, for all the listeners is a hundred dollars off training uh, through C Risk Academy. So if you're interested in that, um, there are details out on their webpage. It's CRiskAcademy.com. So it's C is in the letter C, RiskAcademy.com. And if you put forward slash save 100. So that's CRiskAcademy.com forward slash save 100. Uh, there is an offer there that they are making available to listeners of the podcast to be able to save $100 uh, on your first two courses. Uh, so again, if you are committed to 
uh, investing in yourself, here's a great way for you uh, to just make a hundred bucks effectively um, by listening today. So go out to that website, take them up on their offer and uh, just follow the instructions that they have there on, on uh, the website uh, for you to be able to take advantage of that and to start getting the training uh, that you need. So again, um, thank you for being with me today. And uh, I just really want to implore you uh, to make sure that you are investing in yourself. Uh, every, every week I talk to people who are not and, um, and things aren't going so well for them. And the people that I see, that I, that I study, that I know who are successful, uh, or if we look to stories like we did today of, of Mr. Perlman and, and Jimi Hendrix, uh, success leaves clues. And the people who are successful, uh, the people that, that you know, really are the top of their game are those people that invest in themselves. So if you wanna be at the top of your game, uh, make sure to make and take the time and money and effort to be able to invest in yourself. Uh, you may not become a god of the strings, but you can still, if you invest in yourself, the sky is the limit for where you can go. So take care, my friends. I will uh, talk to you this next week. Uh, go out, have a great rest of your week, and make sure to invest in yourself. And I'll see you on a future episode of Jammin' with Jason. And that's a wrap. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Jamming with Jason. Keep on rocking in the audit world. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you later on the next show. If you'd like to earn continuing professional education for listening to today's episode, head on over to C-Risk Academy at ondemand.criskacademy.com. And that's C as in the letter C, riskacademy.com. Not only do you get a CPE certificate, but you also will have access to the video version of today's show. The views and opinions expressed on this show are that of the individuals and not of their respective organizations.